Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Underwater Photography Show. I am Matthew Sullivan. And I'm Alex Mustard. Uh, and today we're doing our second installment of Inspirational Instagram. Um, so these are just pictures that I have come across on Instagram that I felt were worthy of sharing uh, for various reasons. It could just be that it's a cool animal, a cool subject, uh, an awesome image of a mediocre subject. Um, <laughs> but they're pictures that I felt deserve to be shared on Instagram. So now we're going to share them uh, to you, with you guys as well. Um, so Alex, if you want to bring up the first one. Yep, we've got the first one up there now. It's um, taken by Mark Strickland Photography. And I'll hand over to you to tell us um, why we, we, you put it in. So, first of all, it's a cool behavior. Uh, it's a snakefish eating a flying Gernard. Um, snakefish, at least I have always found, are almost impossible to get close to. Uh, they are really, really skittish. Um, so getting a picture of one in general is pretty difficult. And then Mark managed to capture one eating, which might be why he was able to get close to it. Uh, and I would have loved to have seen how this played out. And if yeah. that thing managed to choke down an entire Grenard. Yeah, I think that, yeah. I mean, and generally, you know, as a photographer, your best opportunities for these kind of predation shots are where the predator picks prey it can't swallow. Um, because yeah. it gives you the most chance to to get in there. And this is a really cool one because you've got uh, a really nice predator and a really interesting prey item. So it makes for a good photo. Um, I think I would say about you know, snake fish or lizard fish um, around the world, it does vary a lot location to location. Somewhere like Lembe, I would say that they're usually very approachable. Mm. Just used to divers, not, 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 not too concerned. Um, in the Red Sea as well, you know, you shoot them there and you can, you know, you can get really close to them. In other places, you know, they see you coming and they don't want to be around at all. So I think that's a, a very variable thing place to place. Um, photographically, I love the two species in this shot. I think that the background sand is less appealing. And I think if, if I was shooting this, I definitely would have shot this frame. But I think I'd probably also look to have gone in a little bit tighter, just really mm. to try and keep some of that background out. Yeah. I also think what I like about lizard fish as predators is they've got those those sharp fish eating um, teeth. And the line of their jaw is always quite a graphic feature in a picture. And I think you can make quite a, a cool effect um, with them like that. But yeah, it's a really... And then usually as the fish goes further down, you can swing around in front of them and do yeah. more of that head-on angle on them. But it's, yeah, it's a really cool shot. All right, I'm going to move us on to our second one, which is a picture I think we talked about yeah. in <laughs> Inspirational Instagram number one. Um, and yeah. that's a photo by STM Diving of just this incredible um, right whale. Yeah, so I felt since we talked about it last time, we, w we should show it this time. Mm -hmm. um, I, there's a lot of right whale pictures out there these days. Brian Scary probably has the most famous one. Um, but this one is really, really cool. And I think for me, not only do you have like the nice light coming in from the side and sort of rim lighting the whale, mm. I like seeing the bottom and you have this, what I assume are sea pens sticking yeah, up out of the like sand. Yeah, they're sea pens, yeah. So it gives a completely new kind of environment to see those whales in. Cause usually you see them and it's just the whale in the water or you might have barren sand. Um, but the light created really nice ripples and shadows on the sand itself. And then I think the sea pens and the light and the eye contact with the whale, um, it's just a really, really, really beautiful picture. And I would love to see this blown up big uh, on a wall somewhere. I think it'd be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, I have to say, I think it's one of the most stunning whale portraits I've ever seen. I think it, it's really that good uh, yeah. a shot. And I hope we get to see it in more places. I think it'd be a really great picture to to get out there and, and allow you know i think sometimes photographers feel that oh yeah you know i got this many people seeing it on instagram and they all looked at it for half a second you know when these pictures get out into the mainstream media they they really get devoured at a completely different scale and live for much longer and yeah. so don't see that social media as the end point and i'd love to see this picture out there what i love about it is the shadow i love the shadow mm -hmm. and the feeling of this huge beast being weightless it just so delicately skimming the surface. It looks a bit like like a spacecraft, like in a yeah. you know sci-fi film that you know just hovers over the sand and cruises across you know the desert of Tatooine or, or some other planet. <laughs> and I really love that feeling of this great big you know Goliath thing. I know it's it's only a, it's only a pup, but it still looks humongous yeah. and it's absolutely incredible. I love the angle of the light. 
And I think it's mm-hmm. an apps and also the effort that the photographer has made to get down to the sea level. Because, you know, you could have shot down on this and thought you were getting an amazing shot. And by getting down to the sea level, and I presume it's free diving, going all the way down, holding your breath, getting that eye contact just makes a stunning, stunning image. Yeah, it's just one that you can just keep looking at for. Yeah. I've gone back to this picture since I first saw it. I keep going back to it and looking at it again. And it's rare that I do that on Instagram and look at something on my phone like that. Um, but yeah, it's just a really, really beautiful picture. Yeah, stunning, stunning. Right, I'm going to move us on to number three. Um, which is a lovely family of manatees, or oh, not yep. just one family, but there's, but that's a definitely a little pup, at the, a little cover, a um, little one at the background there at the bottom. So I was, Scott is a personal friend. I was with him this day. Oh, sorry, I, was, I didn't read out the name actually. Yes, oh, yeah. Scott Robert Street. Um, tries, um, tries. <laughs> yeah, so I should let you read it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was with Scott this day. We actually left early, and he stayed. And then this mother manatee with three calves showed up and I've never normally manatees will have one calf. Yeah. Maybe in very, very rare situations, they'll have twins or a mother will adopt uh, a second one that got orphaned. I've never seen a picture of three of a mother with three calves. Um, So it was, he has, he has another image of this that I've seen and it's beautiful um and this one's really nice too but i i felt for this because he's the only one he's shared on instagram so far that it needed to be shown just because it's a really unusual thing to see i've literally never seen a picture of one with three calves before no that's why i was kind of struggling to introduce it i was like it's a family (laughs) but it's not a family because there's three calves you know but so and, and from what he told me she was these three calves were with her the whole time and which would seem that maybe she had twins and then adopted another one i because the little one down below is smaller than the other two yeah um so it might be one that she adopted and the other two are her offspring i don't know but either way yeah, it's a so really, really cool, cool thing <laughs> yeah um, i love it i love it i've um i think with manatees if you've never swum with manatees they cannot be they're not necessarily the most attractive mammal in the world (laughs) if you have spent time in the water with them you can't help but think they're beautiful yeah Uh, and i i i haven't i it's a long time since i've regularly been to to see manatees and it's you know i'm I'm hoping that as as matt and i become better friends i might get the chance to go again (laughs) Um, because i had some wonderful times a long time ago going to shoot manatees and yeah i really miss spending time with them because it's just the most it, you know it's beautiful water they're amazing animals they're interactive at times as well and it's such a chilled out thing you kind of just slow down and it's like a whole day of meditation i i love it so and i love the show one, one thing i was going to say until you and you just mentioned it is uh it's rare that a big animal of any sort seeks out interaction with you mm. um but manatees will go out of their way to make sure you pay attention to them. Um, and sometimes you'll just get one that for whatever reason, it you're its friend that day and it will, it'll follow you for hours, um, brushing up against you, swimming over top of you, just coming up looking for scratches, shoving its face right into your camera port. Um, so if you get one of those days, it's there's almost nothing more fun than that. Um, yeah. But I hope you'll come and see the manatees again at some point because it's fun. I've got a, a little video of a manatee and if I can find it, I'm gonna drop it in right now showing me with a manatee from a very very long time ago it's very low resolution video um shot with a little compact camera when they were like four you know 400 pixels or something um resolution um and just just the, how showing how how um adorable they are and how they like it like a dog they just won't leave you alone you get a nudge and they're like no i want your attention now yeah yeah okay right moving on to our next one which is from Nick Moore Underwater um, of Frogfish. Yeah, so I like Nick, I talk to him a lot. He and I nerd out about things not infrequently. Um, And I remember when he first sent me this picture on Facebook, and I'm pretty sure I called him some unpleasant names, uh, not only because I really like the portrait of it, I really like the shallow depth of field, I like the lighting, I love having the lure out, but it's just a spectacular frogfish. Um, and we get a lot of frogfish here locally, but we generally, they're all striated and we have other species too, but generally they're pretty plain. And once in a while I'll get a red one or an orange one, something like that. Um, but we never, I mean, I know this is a painted and we obviously don't get them here. 
Um, but I've never, even when I saw painted in Lembe and Analao, I never saw one with this kind of color. Uh, and I, it contrasts really, really well with the black. Um, and I, I love the fact he used a narrow depth of field because then it draws your attention right to the face, right to the lure. Um, and I, frogfish are my favorites, so I can't, it's uh, any picture of the frogfish is, I'm going to have a little bit of a bias towards. No, it's, it's really, really nice shot. And like you, I'm a big fan of seeing them with the lure out. I think, you know, perhaps, perhaps kind of back in the day, but, you know, photographers used to want to get shots of them yawning. And I think that photographers have realized that it's a even more impressive photo to get one with the lure fishing and doing its, doing its thing. What makes it original as a, as a type of fish, um, you know, getting that to star in the picture is, is a big part. What I like about this shot is the way it's lit. Um, that lure is against that really dark sand. So it really, the shadow of the frogfish. So it really stands out from the picture. And I think that really helps that lure really pop in the final shot. Okay, moving on to our next one, which is, is this LGWV photo or is it a capital yeah. I? Yeah. I uh, know it's L. LGWV uh, another... photo. Yeah. Um, this is Lawrence. He's a local photographer here. And this wreck, everybody who's ever dived Blue Heron has probably seen this wreck. And it's either passed over or it's photographed in a very typical wreck way, trying to get a, you know, maybe the sun in the background, something like that. Um, so when I saw that he pulled this off, uh, I, it was, I've, you know, there's other wreck images like this, but it, because I know the wreck and I've dived on it a lot and I've never even thought to do this, uh, that carried a lot of weight for me. And I just like how he, how he did it. Uh, so if I recall correctly, he put his camera on a tripod, it's a two minute exposure. And then he swam around himself, shining the light in various places. And I know there's been wreck images done like this before. Um, but I, I think he did a really nice job with it. And, and I like that it's a local wreck. Um, so it shows that there's still fresh images to be had at a place that's been dived billions of times, essentially, uh, at Blue Heron. Yeah. That's a great sentiment actually from the shot is that, you know, just because you feel you've exhausted the photographic potential in the place where you regularly go, there's always um, a fresh image to be had. Yeah. Right. I'm going to move us on to the next one, which is from Anxo B Whale. Um, <laughs> I, I missed out the underscore. I It might be A-N-X-O. You're laughing, so I've clearly got something. <laughs> well, no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't oh, okay. Know. Um, I, don't know who he, I don't know who he is, uh, but... I love mola molas. They're one of my favorite fish, uh, and I've I've seen two of them in my life, and neither of them looked like this one yeah, with the stunning. crazy black and white polka dot pattern, um, and it, with the little school of fish in the front. So it's just a really nice portrait of an awesome, awesome fish. Uh, I think it's a big one to, as well by looking yeah. at the size of the pilot fish. Yeah. Um, so I think it's yeah shot in the Azores. I don't know if. They, if it's a different species over there that has these spots, but whatever this is, I would love to see one that looked like that. I I would think it's a different species. I suspect that this is probably um, so. I know I don't know a lot about mola mola classification, but I know that four or five years ago they realized that rather than lumping them all as one species, that there was differences between them. I suspect that they've left the original species as the one that you get around Europe just because that was probably where it was first described. And that's kind of the scientific dogma that the, mm. the original specimen will keep the original name and the other variations. So I think the ones in Bali now are called Molo Alexandria or something like this. Um, so, um, I, I, so yeah, I think w what makes this shot is it's just an incredible individual. I suspect there's probably a little bit more to be got out of this raw file as a shot. Mm. Um, I think it would look stunning as a black and white, just, you Ooh. know, the picture's already going that direction, but, you know, yeah. the it would bring out all of that. It would help the pilot fish come out of the picture as well. Um, but, yeah, just an absolutely stunning fish. I think also it probably it would look better as a photograph with a bit more space around the so subject. I'll give him the credit there. He did post the full image yeah. um, separately, but I I just chose this version no, absolutely. Um, I can see why he cropped it like this because it was going on Instagram. So, yeah. yeah. So, so. But, but yeah, yeah, really, really awesome. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, and probably a really interesting photographer to follow with all the unusual things that, that pass through that part of the world. Okay, um, moving now um, to the Pacific Ocean. 
with Kate um, Violet. Um, or my, yeah, Kate Violet, I guess, yeah. um, from Monterey. So I love Melabies. I don't, I'm not a huge nudibrank guy, uh, but Melabies are really cool, probably because they don't really look like a nudibrank. Um, <laughs> and I have found them quite difficult to shoot, similar to jellyfish. They just seem to absorb any light you blast at them uh, mm -hmm. and not reflect much of it back. Um, and I, I do think that maybe she could make the Melabie a tiny bit brighter in this, but I like the subtle motion blur. I love the pose up on top of that kelp. I like the green water, uh, and I like that you can see the wings on the Melabie and mm. the full frontal face shot with its little Shrek horns up top. Um, yeah, I, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you know, when when you know, um, you know, shot these with with groups on workshop trips, we always talk about getting the personality to come out of them, right. and you know, the pose angle to get those features that make them turn them from a blob of jelly into a cute animal are really important. Um, and also because they are constantly engulfing with their their oral hood, um, so you need to time that shot well. And I think the timing of this shot really creates a, a face. Um, yeah. in, in in the subject, which I think works really, really well in the photo. I think that, um, yeah, like you said, um, a little bit more, um, you could have got a little bit more out of the subject in, in, in terms of the, the lighting, um, or maybe just in the processing as well. I think that, um, you know, you could get that Malibi to stand out against the background more strongly, for example, in a black and white conversion. You could maybe try and take it in a direction that would really give it the pop. I love that arc of the three main um, parts of the kelp. I think that looks looks really really attractive, and the whole framing of the whole photo with kelp kind of off on both sides, creating depth, works really effectively. Very that was nice. going to be one thing I wanted to note on before we moved on was I like the kelp framing it all the way on both sides. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that works nicely. Yeah, very nice. Okay. To um, Jele Missa, under Jele underscore Missa. Yeah, I uh, feel like this is a, a bad gig having to announce all of these. It's <laughs> uh, apologies to all the photographers um, if I if I make a mess of your name. And I know sometimes I'll try and pronounce a load of initials as a word. So apologies <laughs> in advance. But, but frankly, this looks I, yeah. This for is the longest step. time before I actually read his before I actually knew his name, I thought Jell was probably a female name. So I just thought his name was Jell Mister, and it's actually Jesse Miller. He just he messes everybody up by switching oh, the double. Okay, right. <laughs> um, but he's a Pacific Northwest guy, and I I love weird shark. I love weird fish in general, but weird sharks especially. A because mm -hmm. they're not photographed very much, and B just because they look unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, and six kill sharks are a pretty wacky looking shark. Absolutely. Um, so at a few spots in. Washington. You can get them during the summer months coming up a little bit shallower. Uh, generally, they're smaller, five, six, seven foot juveniles. Although it, I think they did get a 12 footer this past year, which would be... That would wake you up on a cold water dive, wouldn't it? Yeah. At night. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, but I really like this. It's a, I like the, the swirl of the dust coming up. I like the lights in the background. I think they add a lot to it. Uh, but you know, the main reason I, I like this one is just because it's a really, a really unusual shark, uh, that's apparently quite difficult to photograph, um, even when they do show up. So, uh, I like this one for the difficulty. I like it for the weirdness and I like the lights in the background with the, the dust coming up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think, yeah, I think those lights in the background are really nice to have. I think if I'd been shooting that, I would have, you know, run this exposure super long you know just with yeah, those yeah. lights you know it's it's just asking for it isn't it you know you'd it would really pull out the silhouette of the shark you would get some kind of crazy wispy stuff going on with them and i love that face because you know that blunt nose just doesn't look like any other shark yeah you know and, you're seeing something different doesn't you know so yeah very and, very cool right if you look at them you wouldn't necessarily think that they're a hardcore predatory shark they look kind of cute and goofy and then you realize they can get, yeah. you know, 16, 12 foot one though is going <laughs> to give that some respect. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I think that's our final one. So I'm just going to take us back to, so you can see us in all our glory again. Um, <laughs> and just say, yeah, thanks very much for watching another episode of the underwater photography show. And um, we'll keep bringing you these inspirational Instagrams and hopefully um, there'll be more exciting images to see next time on the underwater photography show. Thanks very much.